Welcome. I'm, I'm so pleased to be here in Hall. Thank you for inviting me to visit with you all today. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so today I'd like to present to you my uh, research plan for the next few years. Uh, I'll discuss uh, the relevance of this plan and then describe its uh, major content, which is the investigation of large-scale networks. I'll refer to my prior work. I'll talk about my research plan for the future and specific uh, ideas and topics, and talk about how I might reach out to industry and then close out with a summary. Railways in the uh, United Kingdom especially uh, face a future of growing demand and utilization. And in response to this, there are significant plans for investment and expansion. There is, of course, the HS2 project, and generally significant investment across the network for higher frequencies and greater capacity. There are regulatory changes uh, coming up. Uh, there is effort to loosen and, re and relax the tariffs on the channel tunnel, for freight especially, and there is a discussion of revising the franchising scheme for the uh, UK network. And there are significant opportunities for freight that are coming up, and I'll discuss those in more detail later. How is this relevant? How is this relevant to the economy? And how should we evaluate uh, these, these projects? Well, certainly, uh, there's a lot of money involved in, in rail in the United Kingdom. We have a $60 billion government investment budget for projects such as Crossrail and High Speed 2. And there's an enormous demand increase on the railway network projected for the future. Uh, we expect about 400 million additional passenger journeys by 2020 on the UK network. And in freight, we have a significant increase. We see a 25% increase projected, uh, a 25% increase in train counts uh, already occurring in the prior 10 years at Felixstowe. And we see a 30% forecast in freight demand through to 2023 from today and a further 140% increase in freight demand projected out further uh, about 20 years from today to 2030. So, uh, uh, what, uh, so the, the railway, the primary focus of my, of my research to date has been in railway operations and railway scheduling. And the railway at first seems to be just a basic, simple uh, network flow, and uh, it might initially appear to be a very simple planning problem. But it is really quite complex because what we have here are these real resource conflicts all over the network that are very hard and, and, uh, and non-negotiable. And these are, these are resource conflicts where trains are on tracks, and you, you really cannot simply just pick up these trains and move them around like you would trucks in a, in, a, in a highway or ocean vessels in a port. So it leads to some very complex scheduling problems. In particular, most of my research and most of the management problem in a railway network is configuring paths because paths need to be contiguous and they need to uh, interact with other paths and they need to negotiate the fixed infrastructure of the railway network. And further, we have to be very careful to avoid various uh, failures in path configurations, such as, uh, for example, this item called lockup, where a path becomes uh, so infeasible that uh, the train is incapable of moving forward on the network at all. And uh, this is, a, a, for example, in, in the example in the middle here, th there is no feasible future direction for this train. It is completely stuck. And in fact, in this particular configuration, the only alternative is for one of these trains to actually back up and reverse direction. We take all of these complex paths and organize them and then need to visualize them really almost in three dimensions because they interact in geography and in time and then in interaction with each other across the network. These interactions are especially uh, difficult because they have a domino effect on each other. The configuration of one train path can then cause a, 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 a knock-on effect across multiple train paths. And so we can see the influence of one train's interaction, uh, operation on the network causing delays or changes in, in travel path of trains that could be hours away further up on the network. 
My research is also uh, extendable to other fields of operations research and management science. So, for example, one could easily visualize a supply chain uh, in a just-in-time environment as a path, as a sequence of paths, uh, sharing resources, a network of constrained resources, and so there are, there are potential applications of my research to areas beyond railway management. For example, uh, here's a three-station flow shop, and this is a constrained flow shop, constrained resources, and also a desire to constrain work in progress. And so we can visualize that flow shop as a graph. We can visualize that flow shop as a graph, a network graph, and we can see the direction of flow, the arcs on the graph, and the various alternatives in, ter in terms of when resources are used and when work sits in inventory, and there are multiple path, path combinations possible for moving a job to that shop. Well, it turns out that uh, I can then visualize the path of a job in a flow shop very similarly to the way we visualize the path of a train on a network. And so I can visualize this as a constrained hypergraph, and so there are potential applications of my scheduling research to flow shops and manufacturing. My prior work in this field uh, begins with the concept of a hypergraph, modeling train paths as a hypergraph. And here we have a picture of a hypergraph, and you see the, the potential paths for the trains on this hypergraph, and then I model the resource conflicts as the nodes on this hypergraph, and we are then summing the uh, resource utilization across these nodes and do, essentially doing a node packing exercise in this graph here. With this methodology, with this formulation, I have made a number of prior contributions to the field. I've uh, uh, contributed significant work to the concept of what capacity is as a function of heterogeneity on the network, the mixture of train speeds on the network. I have published in the area of auction pricing, uh, the idea of what would happen if you priced a path on the network using an auction process. And I've also published in various areas in terms of uh, the effect of uh, 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 stochastic uh, train times and uh, how the dispatch strategy should be arranged in the event of a, a, a mix of random train path uh, options. So where would I go going forward with this research? Well, I have a number of research streams that I think are, are, are very fruitful in potential publications. First of all, in mathematics, I think there is a significant uh, area for potential publication looking at dynamic and robust scheduling. And I think there is area for publication for me to take my existing work and apply it, as I mentioned, to flow shops and to publish in that area. Uh, in the area of supply chain, I think there is a significant opportunity in this position at the University of Hull to examine how the UK connects with the continent through the railway network, uh, now with the Channel Tunnel, and to also examine what would happen as we change the nature of the rail freight network in the UK and how that would influence the, the, distribution, the distribution network uh, in the United Kingdom. I think those are very uh, interesting research topics that would be very specific to my coming to the United Kingdom. Uh, for, lastly, in the area of pricing, I think there's a, lo uh, a lot of interest in pricing, particularly as we, as we seek to co continue to maintain a commercial operation of the railways and the commercial operation of the transport network. So clearly pricing is a very important uh, area of examination, and there are a lot of uh, uh, themes in terms of market theory and game theory and individual case studies of how pricing occurs as we continue to operate this uh, uh, open access network in the UK and, and uh, continue to, to pursue a commercial private operation of the transport services. There are a number of ways that I would reach out to, to, uh, to players, to stakeholders in the UK supply chain and transport networks. I certainly would reach out to government agencies, the Department of Transport, uh, to uh, the network rail, uh, and then, of course, the train operating companies. There are a number of ways in which my research would be relevant, and I would make it relevant to, to uh, applied situations. Certainly, there are uh, uh, ongoing concerns about service revisions and changes to the nature of, of rail services in the UK, and, of course, all of these various 
discussions of infrastructure investment in the UK and those are certainly ways in which my research would be relevant to ongoing decisions. In terms of financial support, I would certainly seek out uh, grants from the European Union. There are a number of UK sources for financial support. I'll go over those here in a minute. And I think I should not ignore the opportunity for consultation for commercial consulting as an opportunity to both fund uh, research activities and to provide interesting topics for publication. So who would the partners in research be in the United Kingdom? Uh, there's an organization called Freight on Rail that I uh, am very interested in and I think I will uh, try to contact and, uh, and, uh, and coordinate with in terms of investigations and research on rail freight. Uh, the Association of Train Operating Companies is clearly an important uh, organization to contact. And Network Rail is starting to make uh, overtures to outside parties to investigate research problems and, and operating problems on the railway network. Uh, how do we make this research relevant? Well, I think there are a couple of very interesting topics uh, coming up here in, in the United Kingdom. The first one I think that is of particular interest is this question of the gauge, the railway gauge on the network. Uh, the loading gauge is what I really mean. This is the dimension of the space uh, around tunnels and bridges and platforms that, that determines how large a railway vehicle can be. And the United Kingdom suffers from an extremely small loading gauge. And there are plans and, and desires to extend the loading gauge in the United Kingdom to allow larger vehicles, larger freight cars. And I think this would have a significant impact on the flows of freight and the supply chain in the United Kingdom. Then there is, of course, High Speed 2. I think that uh, clearly is uh, 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 something to be investigated. Uh, have a huge impact on the both passenger flows and surprisingly will have an impact on freight flows as well. And I think that is uh, frequently uh, ignored or, or not, not known that high speed 2 will have an impact on freight flows in the United Kingdom. And finally, I think the channel tunnel is uh, vastly underutilized. I think this is a network link to the continent that uh, has enormous potential for freight and it is uh, vastly underutilized. And I think there are a number of moves afoot to uh, uh, relax tariffs, the charges, the f charges for trains through the channel tunnel. And I think there are significant opportunities to, to move more freight to the continent through the tunnel. So where are we going to get financial support to do some of this research? Uh, there are a number of organizations that, uh, that actively promote and distribute funds for research. There's a particular organization called the Rail Research Association in the United Kingdom that has a regular recurring uh, uh, call for research and grant opportunities. Uh, the European Commission is a frequent funder of rail research and, uh, and transport research. And then the Department of Transport for the United Kingdom has in the past funded research. I, I'm not clear whether there's going to be uh, fresh research grant opportunities uh, immediately in the future with the current uh, government budget situation, um, but uh, it's certainly something we should keep our attention on and pay attention to. I think also uh, it's extremely important uh, that overtures are made to the actual commercial operators for research opportunities and funding and consultation. Uh, so I think all of these various players, I just these are just a few examples here up on the screen, the passenger operators, Virgin Trains, uh, GB Rail Freight, DB Schenker, these are all people that I think is extremely important to network with and to establish communication with uh, both to solicit sponsorship for research, and also, I think, uh, again, to pursue consultation, consulting activity. I think the consulting activity is a way to engage the commercial operators and uh, kind of cost share. That is, uh, there would be spin-off cash from consultation that could be applied to research, and there are probably, uh, th and there will be significant publication opportunities from the data and from the information collected in the, in the course of consultation. So in conclusion, uh, I hope I've demonstrated that my, my research plan for the next few years would have a significant economic impact, has relevance to the economy and to the supply chain, that it is crossover and interdisciplinary, that I can take many of my mathematical methods and apply them to areas beyond transportation. And I hope I've demonstrated that I have a, a record of productivity, that I've published well in this field, and that there are many interesting streams in mathematics, pricing, and, and uh, well, I've got to change that, and strategy. No, not strategy. Um, and, 
and that I have a, a, a scheme for reaching out to the government and to commercial partners and that my research has practical impact on the United Kingdom. So I appreciate you so much. Thank you for taking a few minutes to listen to me and I uh, look forward to talking to you further about, uh, about this research and about uh, the potential for coming to the University of Hull. Thank you so much.